In a world full of conventional Hollywood cliches and recurring lackluster sequels, one critic has seen it all who can provide you with all the movie news, opinions, and reviews that could very well save humanity as we know it. This is Libby's Movie Hunt. And now, your host, Libby Hunt. Hi, welcome to Libby's Movie Hunt. I'm your host, Libby Hunt, along with my co-host, Kevin E. Hey, Libby, how are you? Good, how are you? Fantastic. Happy weekend. Absolutely. And my voice is a little scratchy sounding because I have allergies. Really. Nobody will notice. Well, now they no. might because you had a, you know you brought it up. But. Yes, they're going to notice it. Now they're not. <clears throat> I have my drink here. But. No, I didn't notice at all. Good. Well, welcome, everybody. We're so, so glad you're tuning in to hear about more movies. It's kind of weird, though, isn't it, Kevin? Right now, there's not many good movies out. It seems like it's gone on for too long, too. I know. I've been long. waiting forever. but <laughs> I know. My favorite time of year is the Oscar time. Just the best movies come yes. out. You know, those months leading up to the... Oscars, but I, I, I also love the summer too. I mean, I, I like the big, uh, the block blockbusters. Of, yes, exactly. Yeah. But well, this is a time for a lot of good, you know, independent art house films to come out, but we did like the fate of the furious. I, that was, I probably of all the movies I've seen in the past month or so, cause people keep saying, what's the movie I should go see now? And I'm like, that's really the only one I can think you, of. That if was you, it, yeah. If you just want to be entertained. Yeah. It's perfect. It was really good. Definitely popcorn worthy. But I saw this week, Unforgettable with Katherine Heigl. You didn't see it, right? I did not. Okay. It, it's Katherine Heigl, Jeff Stoltz. He plays her husband-to-be. Rosario, Rosario Dawson plays... Oh, that, no, no. So here's the deal. Katherine Heigl and Jeff Stoltz were married. They get a divorce, and he's going to marry Rosario Dawson. Well... I love Rosario Dawson. Rosario, she's really good in it. She had been abused in a previous relationship and had a restraining order against this boyfriend, and she never told her new fiancé about it. Fiance about it. So Catherine Heigl is not liking that Rosario is coming into the picture. She, they have a she has a daughter with her ex husband, and all of a sudden she starts she becomes like psycho, like the bet the you know one of those um, ee ee yeah yeah um, absolutely fatal attraction type crazies. Does all these crazy things. Or like things. a Play Misty for me. Yeah, almost. <laughs> all these. Or what's the bed that rocks the cradle? What was that one with, um, it was so famous, the nanny comes in. I don't know. It'll come to me. But just, she becomes one of those people. So it was fun to see Katherine Heigl play a crazy person. But and she's, it seems like she hasn't been in anything been in a anything. long time. I know. I was kind of hoping this was going to be like a comeback role A return, for yeah. Yeah, because it's a good cast. The little uh, Her best friend in the movie is Whitney Cummings. And she w did pro Two Broke Girls. You may remember her. She's, uh, she's comedian, right? Comedian. Yeah, she's, and then uh, the she's funny. The director is Denise DeNovi, and she did great movies. Crazy Stupid Love, The Lucky One, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, Catwoman, What a Girl Wants, A Walk to Remember, Message in a Bottle, Ma Practical Magic. I mean, great movies. Definitely. Yeah. That's a good list. That's a great list. I think she did most of those, but she was, and I like A good track record. I like a woman director. Okay, this is a fun, another funny little tid tidbit about this movie. Cheryl Ladd, you know, one of the um, Charlie's Angels that replaced Farrah Fawcett in the yeah. 70s, plays Katherine Heigl's mother. She's so unrecognizable in the movie because of her plastic surgery that literally, I waited till the end of the movie to watch the credits roll to make... To make, see if it's really her. I was like, who <laughs> is that Cheryl Ladd? I mean, it's the worst facelift I've ever seen. It's horrible. I'm scary? Just, yeah, scary. It's scary. <laughs> it's like... Eh. I remember feeling that way about Courtney Cox in Scream 4. Oh, I was just like, oh my God. She injected her, her lips. Her face doesn't move anymore. Yes, that and her <laughs> lips were just... Yeah. Oh, I don't like that. It's like uh, cute Meg Ryan. You're like, why? Yeah, oh, she's unrecognizable. Oh, I, I mean, I am all for a little tweaking here and there, but the the total... Yeah, you want, too. You want to be look like yourself. Yes. You know? I don't get it. No, uh, Melanie Griffith, another oh, one. Oh, gosh. Yep. I know. It's horrible. But, we okay. turned into a celebrity gossip show. Yes, we're <laughs> gossiping. It's so fun. I know. I'm worried about the Kardashians. They're at some point going to start. I mean, they already look kind of weird. At some point, they're going to look. They're imploding at they're this going point, to, right? I mean, I would, I would certainly think so. It's getting weird. And it's they're getting all really doing, weird. They're for sure doing butt implants or oh something. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Because, I mean, the young daughter, Kylie, that all of a sudden, not Kylie, which one's the model? Kendall's the little model. 
Right. Kylie's the other one that looks like her Kim now. I mean, yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. She something's happened. Her bottom looks like a big peach. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> yeah, it's it's unnatural. It's unnatural. Absolutely. Okay, wait, it's, we it's went weird. off on a tangent. But I mean, I think like there's so much surgical enhancement going on in that family. That's just uh, the tip of the iceberg. It's fascinating. Okay, well, that's well, not, yeah. you know, I have <laughs> we'll to say forward. about the Kardashians, I don't know if you viewers out do this out there, but I'll, I'll turn it on and I kind of can't stop watching. See, I've never watched. Oh my gosh. You, but I get enough of it on social media. That you know. Yes, there's a deluge there for sure. Well, they, the family, all they all seem to like each other. I don't know. That's, that, that is true. Yeah. Okay, well, so back to Unforgettable. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I don't know where that went. Cheryl Ladd to the Kardashians. Okay, Unforgettable got 28%. On Rotten Tomatoes, or 25. Yeah. So, here's the deal. Yep, 25. I would not, to me, a 25% on Rotten Tomatoes would normally be a bag full of kernels. Yeah, that's true. But this movie, I would not say is a bag full of kernels. I wouldn't even say it's half popped. I mean, I kind of liked it. So... You it, can't, I mean, Rotten Tomatoes, the critics are not always going to, you, right. you can never tell. They're always going to be, like uh, Office Christmas Party, for example. Yes. You and loved, I loved that movie. Loved, <laughs> and it was totally Saw rotten. it like two or three times. Yeah. Loved it so I much. I saw it twice. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, what would I, see, I need to come up with another rating between, between popcorn worthy and half pop, like a mildly popcorn worthy. Decently popcorn yeah. worthy. But it's, I think, I'm kind of sorry about the title, Unforgettable, because I bet some critics are going, it's forgettable. Forgettable, yeah. You know? But it's not. I mean, it's it's entertaining. So, half popped, I kind think, of, uh, mildly. It's warming its way into popcorn worthy. It's fun to see Katherine Heigl play. It's fun to see any woman play a psycho. That is true. I don't know why. Yeah. But, I mean, I just finished watching uh, Bates Motel, the final season was oh, this week. Oh, so good. Yeah. I did too. I Plenty of, uh, you know, you have Vera Farmiga, who's a psycho yeah. woman, and then you know, obviously... He was. Freddie Highmore is a psycho. The psycho. Yeah, exactly. There's so many good things on TV right now. There are. It was yeah. a, it was a fun ride. I know. I'm, I've enjoyed it. And then they showed all those uh, Bates Motel fans. Did you see that that last segment they did? Yeah, it was like, uh, they called it like checking out or checking something. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was It cute. was good. I enjoyed it. So unforgettable, I would say mildly popcorn worthy. And they left it, in some of these scary movies, they leave it at the end where they could have a sequel. And I surely they won't do a sequel. But you'll see, if you do go see it, that there's a possibility. They leave it kind of open. Yes. And um, it, it's been a long time since I've even seen Katherine Heigl on the screen. But I watched a little bit of the trailer before uh -huh. the show. And she still looks great. She looks great. She hasn't had too many injections. No, <laughs> no, no. She's like, And Rosario Dawson also. She's beautiful. And she's yeah. really good in it. She's a she's a solid actress. She's and, a very solid actress. And the and guy, if, Jeff Stoltz, I, he's been in a lot of stuff. But he's, he's good. He reminds me. Reminds me of, oh, I can't think. The guy who's married to Fergie, D Josh Dumel. Uh, yeah. He reminds me a little bit of him. I could see that. Okay, we'll move on. You saw. I saw Free Fire. And tell me about this. Is it an action movie? I know nothing. Can you believe it? It is an action movie. It's somewhat of an action comedy movie. That's uh, what I thought. And you were just saying um, how people are asking you what to go see because, you know, just for pure entertainment. This is, I'm just going to give a little disclaimer beforehand. This is one of those movies. Yeah. This is a pure entertainment piece. If you're in, you know, it's very frenetic and uh, gritty, but very entertaining. Um, it, the story basically it takes place in the 70s. Well, who's in it first? Uh, Cillian Murphy, uh, Brie Larson, and... Um, Hold on, who's the other one that, I, that I'm forgetting? Uh, Army Hammer, that's right. Okay, I knew that. Because in all honesty, Army Hammer hasn't been in that many good movies. This is <laughs> this is one that I think he can, you know, kind of a feather in his cap, so to speak. Uh, it takes place in the 70s, and I love that feel of like 70s uh, grindhouse or like noir, you know, like yes. the grainy kind of, they, they really capture that feeling of like a 70s. Like the nice guys? Kind of, yeah. yeah. A lot like that, mm -hmm. actually. Um, so everything looks and feels authentic, uh, even if slightly over the top. The characters are great. It's, it centers around an arms deal that goes bad, basically. All these people are meeting in one space for this weapons deal. It goes horribly wrong, and basically everyone is in this room with a gun, and no one is in control. So there's constant, a lot of shooting back and forth, but it's all very intense. It almost reminds me of the feeling, even though it's more people, almost of like a uh, phone booth where you're stuck in one place the whole time and anything can happen. And it, So how long are in this, they're in this room? Is it a long scene? It's the whole film takes place in this room. But like... For, for the most part. Once they're in the room and then once the shootout, once it starts, they're all in this room the whole time. Okay, that sounds kind of interesting. It, it is. It's a, one of those premises that I thought sounded really cool, but uh -huh. when I was watching trailers, thought this could be really gimmicky and end up being horrible, which is what a lot of people also thought about John Wick. But I think it succeeds very well, not 
as well as John Wick. Um, it, it does have some flaws. Uh, the cinematography isn't that fluid. It's not that edgy. It's not as edgy as it's trying to be, basically. Right. I think is what I'm what I'm saying. But it's it's very entertaining, very fun. I would definitely say go check it out for sure. Popcorn worthy. I'm not going to call it Oscar worthy. It's not. I wouldn't even say honestly. It's as entertaining as Fate of the Furious. But, uh, but it's pretty entertaining. Yes, or it's John Wick or John Wick 2. But yeah, definitely worth checking out. Free Fire, Popcorn Worthy for sure. The director, I'm not sure. I really didn't research that much. Uh, ben Wheatley. I'm not really. That yeah, me either. Yeah. We may have to look up what he did. Well, Brie Larson, she hadn't, you know, she won the Academy Award last year for Room right. or the year before, and she hadn't been anything in, since King Kong. So she's doing two kind of blockbuster kind of movies after winning the Academy. True. When, when, when's she in this last Kong? Kong Skull Island. Yeah, yeah. Which I thought that was a really strange role for her. I don't know. It was a little bit. Was she good in this? Uh, yeah, definitely. I liked. I think I like seeing her more in uh, independent type films. Yeah, she's I think that so. Kind of she seems to me. fit that more. Well, uh, she was in. She was the sister of Amy Schumer in in that train wreck. Train wreck. Yeah, that's the first time I'd laid eyes on her, but I like her. Yeah, me too. Well, um, okay, I. This, I know this is really dumb, but I, a lot of times look, well, there's a lot of reasons I, a movie intrigues me. I didn't like their movie poster. Which movie poster? For Free uh, Fire. Oh, really? It's a bunch of people kind of upside down and it just, I couldn't get a feel, like it didn't draw me in. It has that, that circular where everyone's pointing a gun at each other. Well, it's cool looking, but like you don't know who they are. I like to kind of see a movie poster where it's kind of the main character, the main character, and some, I, I, it helps me want to go. Yeah, me too. See, I'm a marketing person. Like, too. <laughs> uh, like the Taken movie poster is a, cl- a classic movie poster for uh, me. A movie that I would want to see. It's him. Yeah, just a silhouette of Liam Neeson holding a gun in cool, grainy black and white colors. I'm like, that's cool. Yes, but so it, that movie poster didn't make me want to see that movie. Weird. That's, uh, that's weird. I thought is it was it, cool, but that's because I'd been tracking it. I well, think, it's and then cool, when it came but it's out. like I didn't know. I couldn't tell unless I looked closely. See, I'm older and I can't see as well who the people are that are in it. Yeah, no, you can't. You can't tell at all. And plus, they, yeah. a lot of almost everyone has long hair and facial hair to match the whole 70s right. theme and it makes it even more difficult. From this poster, I wouldn't be able to recognize Army Hammer or Cillian Exactly. Murphy. See my point? But yep. see, it is more geared to you young people that want to see it anyway. 18 to what is it? 35 yes. that are the demographics. They're not me. True. You know, but I mean... Moms. It's true. <laughs> yeah, it, it's more of the... It's trying to appeal to like the... Uh, the Guy Ritchie fan demographic, mm-hmm. I feel like. It, yeah. it plays in with those kind of films well. But see, I, I didn't have any desire to see that. But isn't that funny that I would want to see the Fast and the Furious one? Yes. I don't know why. <laughs> it I've is. just watched almost... those for so long. How long have those been going on? 15 years? I mean, this so, is the eighth one, yeah. So, so I, I guess I've just followed them so long. Yeah. I mean, um, um, one thing that is kind of a bummer, it's it's not a commercial success really at all. I mean, it's mm-hmm. not even in the top box office list. So oh. not many people are seeing it, but it also is a limited release movie. Um, so I'm hoping it'll get more attention. It has a 67% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's and, not even like in the top 10 box office mm-mm. for the past couple of weeks? No. That's kind of sad. I you know. know. They probably spent a lot of money on it. Had to have. I'm t- if they had talked to me... If they'd done a better movie poster. <laughs> better poster. It's funny you bring up movie posters because mm-hmm. uh, one of my friends and I used to always talk about how the poster for Star Wars The Force Awakens when it mm-hmm. came out, all it was was just yellow letters that said Star Wars and it said The Force Awakens on a space background. That's it. And that we're was like, it. You're it's right. so simple, but it, it was awesome. Like, really made everybody want to see it still. And it was the first one. It was hardly anything. Yeah. That's so true. Wait, uh, listeners, a minute ago, Kevin's phone rang and it was, <laughs> tell me again what the ring was. It was uh, BB 8 from The Force Awakens. Yeah, which just cracks me up. That he, that's his phone, because um, he says... I have different Star Wars for different people who text me. <laughs> you are such a Star Wars fan. We'll have to do a Star Wars trivia. A major Star you. Wars fan. Oh, yeah, I would, I, would, I would kill it then. Because I would know nothing, but that would be fun. That would be fun for you. <laughs> yeah, we should do that back and forth. We'll pick our expertise, and then we can quiz each other. That I don't know as much about other things. Tell me, I didn't get a talk. I mean, I haven't not. I've been so busy. Your mom filled in for me last week. Yes. And I have still not been able to watch the show. Did, what'd y'all talk about? Um, we talked about, about a, streaming. I, I reviewed because uh, the premiere of Better, Better Call Saul was, okay. uh, so I talked about that. Um, and then, yeah, the best streaming things, Rogue One is one of the movies I mentioned that's definitely worth renting if you're looking okay, for a good. new or you know streaming film. It's a great one that's out right now. Um, and their finest. That, um, and their finest, yeah. The, did, y'all, did y'all like that? I didn't see it. Yeah, um, but did she, she like it. it. Yeah, it did. See that it didn't really appeal to me either. I don't know why. She, and I, she just gave it popcorn. Yeah, not. I like. And but that's, thank you, Carol. 
for filling in. I know that was fun for you to be with your son. Yes, thanks, Mom. Yeah. It's always fun. Yeah, because they th- she loves movies like I do. I she think does. that's where you got your love of movie. And I've passed it on to my children, too. They love movies like I do. Oh, so she gets so excited when yeah. she gets to fill in. So. It's so fun. I love it. Thank you. It's a good break for me. I know, I mean, know the show's in good hands. <laughs> um, Thank you. Okay, then the third movie we're going to talk about, I really like this film, and it's probably going to leave theaters, this. I bet, after this weekend. So get out and see it if you can. It's called The Zookeeper's Wife with Jessica Chastain. She's, you know, Jessica has been nominated twice for an Oscar. Um, she, it takes place in 1939 Poland, and her name is Antonia Zabrinska. And I, it's a true story, and her husband is played by Daniel Brunt. He plays Lute. Well, no, that's Lute's. Heck, who plays Hitler's zoologist. Her husband is played by John Heidenberg. He's Jean, Jan Zabinski. Um, it's also directed by a woman, Nikki Caro. Who well, did, I'm not familiar with either. Who did McFarland USA with Kevin Costner, North Country with Charlize Theron. So I love these women directors. That makes me so happy. But Definitely. this movie basically is about, it took place, they owned, the, took, they owned and lived on the property of the Warsaw Zoo. And what they did is when Hitler came in and, you know, was taking over and set up the Warsaw Ghetto, they would go into the ghettos, Warsaw Ghetto, and get scrappings for the animals. And when they did, under the hay, they would hide the Jews in their trucks, bring them into the zoo, and hide them under the ground in their house. Isn't that cool? I had no idea that's what this movie was about. So it's one of those hiding place, you know, um, Anne Frank type deal where people are in hiding. They're hiding people out of, they're taking them out of the Warsaw ghetto and hiding them at the zoo. Is that the coolest? That is a fascinating but story. But that's a story. They also did a poor job of marketing because from the poster, you could never tell that that's what it was about. Well, it makes you think it's about a zoo in Poland. And yeah. And it's going to be like a feel good, you know, at one point. Like we bought a zoo. Yeah. It wasn't that at all. There's one point um, they bomb, when they bomb that Poland and they come in, they bomb the zoo and all the animals are let loose. And so filming that was very interesting. They said trying to wrangle tigers on streets oh, yeah. and stuff. And they, you know, they gathered Seems up. a little dangerous. Yeah. They gathered up a lot of them. But um, the guy who played, Dan- Daniel Brunt, who played Lutz Heck, Hitler's zoologist, is really good. He's been in a bunch of stuff. But. It got 58% on Rotten Tomatoes. Would that be uh, half popped? I mean, I don't... I I guess, because, yeah, I mean, I would think you'd want to be in the 60% range to be considered popcorn worthy. It's weird, though. I mean, 58% based from um, how many reviews? 117 reviews. However, audience ratings out of 7,000 reviews, it has an 81%. Oh, okay. So the the audience, this is one of those... Cases where the audience liked it a lot more than the uh, than the critics did. Right. Well, I think it's definitely popcorn worthy. I wouldn't say it's Oscar worthy. I think it had potential to be. If you know. Uh, yeah. The story is great. Well, if they'd made it even a little sadder, do you know what I'm saying? It's like they're. It needed to be a little more tear jerk. Tear jerk. Yeah. I mean, obviously they're hiding the Jews. That whole story obviously is the tragedy of our life. But it's. Um, I don't know. It wasn't, yeah, it didn't pull the heartstrings as much as it could have. It didn't need to be Schindler's List, Life is Beautiful heartstrings. You mean just a little more impactful as right. far as you know your investment in the characters and the story. Right. But it was good. I give it popcorn worthy. Popcorn worthy. But like I said, I think it will leave this weekend. So if you want to see The Zookeeper's Wife, get out there and see it. And the, somebody, the person that plays their little child, I don't think I wrote that down. Their kids are really good actors too. But um, it's good. So, do how much time do we have? Any time left? We have some time left. Um, tell I, us. I wanted things. to talk about because I didn't realize until we started the show today that you watched Bates Motel. Yeah. Oh, because I mean that, that was a big thing that happened last week. Was the the the, I, the final episode? The okay, so I and was, I don't know that many people who watch it, so I've been dying oh, to talk yeah. to and someone my, about all, it. Do you know all the young kids watch it? My girls and my yes, my niece. girlfriend got me onto it. Yeah, it's a big teenager thing. They they um what on their Netflix deal? Yes, uh, it's, it's on Netflix, isn't it? I th- yeah, yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, because that's how they're watching. Yeah, it. that's how I saw the first. Because I started watching three or four years, seasons a couple of years ago on TV. Because I'm a huge fan of um, v- what's her name, Alicia the the Vera Farmiga. Vera, I yes. love I love her in anything Me too. she's ever done. I think The Departed was the first thing I saw her in, and oh. ever since then, yeah, I you know, she's she great. directed a movie and started a movie a couple of years that was so good. I think she's a and yeah, remember she was, was up in the air with George Clooney. Yes, that was nominated for. She might have been nominated. Or he I think was. so. It was definitely nominated for Best Picture. Well, yeah, he was. And, and then the, or, um, the girl won for 
Why can't I think of her name? I can't either. The one who's his assistant. That yeah. sings, and she was in the Twilight movies. Yes. Anna Kendrick. Yes. Okay. <laughs> she won an Oscar for that. I was yes. nominated. But she's a great actress. So I started watching it years ago, but my husband got into it too. Well, the past couple of shows, it's kind of winding down, and I haven't been very interested in it. Yeah, I kind of started losing interest. Me too. But then at the end, I, I liked it. It all came together. All right, I'm going to go ahead and issue, to let people know there's going to be a spoiler alert. I'm going to go ahead and give this away. Because, I mean, yeah. th it's already aired. It, yeah. it doesn't matter. And everybody but, probably knows what's going to yes. happen. The one thing that drove me nuts, uh, I, that I hated at first, but now I'm kind of coming around on, is you've kind of waited. You've watched, you've invested in these four seasons to get to the point of Psycho, the film. Right. So you're like, ooh, finally we get to see this creator's take on the mythology, you know, how, right. how it all plays out. And I was really into it up until Marion Crane does not get killed in the shower. And that's when, for some reason, it just totally shook my confidence, I don't know, in confidence in it. Because I'm like, well, this is what we've all been building was up to. Was there a Marion Crane? Yes. Uh, portrayed by Rihanna, which I thought was kind of weird. He's a pop singer as Marion Crane. But, you know. A guy? No. It, it's a girl. But um, Rihanna? Yeah. Okay. See, I must have. I didn't. See, I didn't watch towards the end here. Okay, yeah, so she the episode, was the he ends that... up killing Sam Loomis in the shower instead of her. So they completely switched up the, now, the way it's Sam supposed Loomis? to go. Sam Loomis is her boyfriend. Oh, see, I, see, I like I said, I skipped a few. So that's what happened. I yes. didn't even know they were going to have a show. Rihanna have a basically played the um, girl that gently or your Anne yeah. Hayes or whichever Marion Crane. But yeah, that's like the big thing I felt everything was leading up to. And then they completely switched it, which I'm sure was intentional, you know, artistic yeah. license. But. It, it kind of bummed me out. I'm like, man, that's what everyone waits for is the shower scene. Oh, and then it's not even the look. right person. That's so funny. <laughs> so they, they changed that up. Um, I thought you were going to talk about what happens at the end. But yeah, we'll just. Well, do. that's another thing. I, I, I wasn't crazy about the end. Now yeah. I kind of like that they switched up the Marion Crane thing. That's kind of cool. But I didn't. It, it almost tries too hard to be a happy ending. And I'm like, right. these are not good people. No. I, <laughs> I don't no, like no. the way that there's, a, there's this redemption at the end. Oh, yeah. It seems completely unwarranted because the, like Norman this... just killed Romero. Uh -huh. who was a very noble character throughout the entire series. Uh -huh. And then it all kind of just comes to an end very quickly, and they show him basically walking off in the sunset with his mother, which in, in the afterlife, we're supposed to assume. I, I wasn't a huge fan. Yeah, I, I didn't... But I thought his brother walks off with the girlfriend. Did that, you like yes, that? Very, yeah, I liked that You're Dylan okay got a that? happy ending. Yeah, Yes. For sure. Um, yeah, that show is deep. I mean, but like... Uh, it the, seemed anticlimactic for, yeah, uh, to it, me. Yeah. It, I, it, that was going to be hard to do, though. Okay, I, I was talking about this with my husband. Do you think, since Hitchcock, like who that psycho story, somebody wrote the book years ago, and Alfred Hitchcock turned it into a movie. Does anybody have the rights to that story that they had to go through? I wonder. I, yeah, I wonder that, too, how you're able to even do something like that, to I take know, that and... Take that movie and totally make it into a backstory. Because it's know. a classic, so it's not public domain. It's not like you can just take that and do what you want with it. So that's, a good, that's a good question. how well it was... How good it was considering that movie is such a classic. How do you even I know. do a TV show True. off of it? I didn't think, yeah. And, and, and yeah. Norman does die at the end. I, I'm giving yeah. it away. Well, we know which does would. not happen in the film. I mean, mm -mm. there's two psycho sequels. But, yeah. Anthony Perkins is much older. But, uh, and, and I like yeah. seeing the reaction of the police in the original film kind of analyzing the house and what happened and whatnot. And yes. you never get to see that. There's never any discovery of when oh. finally people are like, oh my God, this guy's been killing yeah. and embalming and all this stuff. Oh. That, it never really happens. Yeah. It, it well, just kind of ends. I know. I, I didn't love the ending. I, I wasn't crazy about it. Um, well, but isn't it always hard? Like, I love Dexter. Yes, Did me you, too. And that ending wasn't great. It's no. when you really love a show, it's hard to... Or Seinfeld. Oh my gosh, the last the episode worst. was the worst. Yep. So, because, I mean, anything I think was going to disappoint us if you really love a show. True. I mean, Breaking Bad is the ultimate for me. It was a great, great ending. ending. It Perfect. It was a great ending. Yeah, you're right. So it can be done. And then I go back and forth on Sopranos. I don't know if I hate it or love it. <laughs> it left, well, it left it kind of open, don't you think? Oh, yeah. I mean, if, like, if, I think David Chase's goal with that ending yeah. was maybe he told a story. Maybe you can pick out the context clues. Maybe Tony is dead. We don't know. But if his intention was to keep people talking and arguing about it for the rest of time, he totally succeeded. Exactly. I'm part of the, because, you know, I'm a nerd. I'm part of the <laughs> Sopranos fan group on Facebook and people still every day are arguing about this. I'm like, that show went out the air so, and what like, do they say? so long ago. That he it got killed? Yes, like, that's what most off. people say and then a lot of people just say, you'll never know. And yeah. I think that's kind of the point. I thought it was. I thought that was a good ending. I thought it was cool. I mean, it didn't disappoint me. But Dexter did. Dexter really and disappointed me. And this kind me. of did, not as much. But no, this I would say it was pretty good. 
I would say overall, Bates is a pretty solid series. Where well, Dexter kind of fell off at the end. What did Dexter? Dexter. Yeah. That final season was not good. Not as good. The best season of Dexter is when the Trinity. Yes, off. my favorite yeah. season four. Yeah. Yep. How sad that With we like serial killer shows. What does that <laughs> say true. about society and, and us? movies? Yep. Yep. That is true. But in Bates Motel, do I don't know. I really, I, I, oh, I can't remember what I was going to say, but I thought it was, I thought it was good. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Although it is, a, it, it seems like because the first couple seasons are a little bit slow, mm-hmm. and it seems like it's all building into this final moment. That's why the final season, I think you and I both thought it was just going to be, you know, super intense, filled to the brim with all kinds of stuff, yeah. and it really wasn't. I, I yeah. A lot. Oh, but the final cut. That's what I was going to say a minute ago. Excuse me. Um, they show the outtakes and stuff, and how Freddie is it Highmore, the uh, yeah. young man. He was so silly and funny, and just how much fun they were such a family. I oh, loved seeing that. And the accents. Yeah. So many people I had no idea had British. accents. I know. Yeah. It, that's always so weird. I'm like, there are actors in America y'all could be hiring. I'm like, that's what you really sound like? like that's, yeah, you're right. Isn't that weird? Every show when they do that, Sons of Anarchy was the same way. Everyone had an accent. when it. Well, my favorite show now, Billions, that the guy who plays the main character in Billions is British, who was in the main character in Homeland when it started. Yes. Um. And that always flips people out. They're like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's great. Well, uh, yeah. uh, James Gandolfini, not talking in that New Jersey accent, always weirded me out oh. after watching Sopranos. It's like impossible for me to picture him not being Tony That's Soprano. True. That's so sad. He's he's passed away. Yes, at 51. It's, yeah. It's a bummer. So are we, are we done? Yes, we oh, are. So at, at the, I mean, I could go on for another 30 know, minutes well, talking we'll, about TV shows. Yeah, <laughs> we will. I know. We'll, we'll have to take a time to do that. Well, thank you for tuning in to Libby's Movie Hunt. And now, go enjoy the movies.